All right, so here is my Google image uh, source for bat ears. I'm going to make sure to transform this ear so that the photographer that took this picture and has it blown up and printed out above their desk at home where they make money as a nature photographer, when they see my image take fire on the internet and, and get purchased by a museum for millions of dollars, they won't recognize, oh, that's my ear, <laughs> right? Because that's the danger of using copyrighted material. So we need to fully transform it so it's not derivative anymore. So that that photographer can't argue, the only reason that sold for a million dollars is because the beauty of that ear. Okay. So how do I save it? I just say save image. I'm going to save everything to downloads. Just so it's all in one place. And make sure you're saving the large image size, not, not the little thumbnail. And you can always find more reference later. All right. So I've created a folder, an assignment to folder. And I started to create little subfolders for different references. So I have a folder for the head, a folder for the arms, folder for the back legs, a folder for the body. This is a way you can kind of think about it. I was thinking I'm going to use these mushrooms for the body. I got this nice hedgehog reference for the back legs. I got another hedgehog. I'll use one of the two. I got the lion mouths. I got two of them for the head. I got lots of different ears for the head. I have the bat ear. I've got the mouth of a deer. I've got different horns, like rhinoceros horns. Pig snouts for the spikes on the back legs. I've got warthogs. I've got everything. And I might need more. Okay, now I can open up my sketch in Photoshop. Remember, I can take a screen grab of my sketch. And now I want to make the image. I'll put the, the inspiration just in the bottom corner. But I want to make the image at least 8 by 10 by at least 300 pixels per inch. Especially if I'm going to be working on it with Photo P as well as Photoshop. But for all of these assignments, I try to, to show you everything I do for the assignment in class. And one benefit of that is that I get to use Photoshop for it. So that means I can make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to clear my crop tool. I'm going to crop pretty close to my sketch. Once I've cropped it, I can go up to my image size, just like we did for our landscape. But this is mine's going to be portrait format, taller than it is wide. Yours might be landscape format. And I'm going to make that at least 8 inches by at least 10 inches by at least 300 pixels per inch. And just because I'm using Photoshop, I'll do the lab standard resolution. You can always go higher, so I'm going to go 350 pixels per inch. But if it's 8 by 10 by 300, Photo P should be able to keep up with it. 300 pixels per inch. That's standard print resolution. I'm doing 350 because that's my, my standard personal lab resolution. 
And that's because you give the original file to your editor and they might decide to make it a little bit bigger than you designed it. And if it's 350, it can do that. All right. So now I need some working space. So here's my sketch. I'll go ahead and flatten the image by going to layer flatten image. So it's all one, one screen grab or whatever. Now I need to grow the, the space around it in order to work. So what I'm going to do is going to take that background layer and I'm going to duplicate it, Command J. Then I'm going to click on the background layer and I'm going to say image canvas size. And then just like we did for our landscape, I'm going to make it 30 inches by 40 inches. This is like creating the desk around your collage. And I want to extend that color with gray. And then hit Command-0 to fit it all on screen. And now I've got lots of space to arrange my images. Now I have created layers. So as soon as you create layers, you want to resave it. So I'm going to say File, Save As. And I'm going to save it as SP22. And this is no longer just my sketch. This is Assignment 2. This is my creature composite. Once you've titled it, make sure it's a PSD file. You do that under Format, a Photoshop file, and then see where you're saving it to. I recommend for you, on, your, on these lab computers, always save it to your desktop and then move it into your folder. My folder has way too many images on it already, so I'm going to move it right into my organized folder. And then when you hit Save, you want to verify that it goes there. So there it is, my Photoshop file. I mark my working files as green, and I always put my name in the title, so if I need to find it, I can just use the search function on a Mac, type in... I just made a duplicate of the background. So Command-J, and the, the layer is called background when it's flattened. So I had flattened it first. But it can, be a, it can be called layer zero, it doesn't matter. It's just my, my gray background that I can always do edit fill with 50% gray too. So lots of ways to get there. So your layer one is the sketch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And now I can start bringing, bringing in my reference parts. So I'm going to use the metaphor of, of making a car kind of on an assembly line. The engine of this car is the head. So that's where I'm going to start. That's where a car gets start, started building. If you're building a Ferrari by hand, you make sure the engine works, and then you build the rest of the car around it and kind of bolt everything to the same chassis. So as I bring it in, I'm not going to shrink anything yet. Remember, they're going to come in at their native resolution. Plenty big. Even though I'm just using an ear, you see that that ear is bigger than I need it to be, which is great. Then I have the different lion's mouths. I think this one is the most promising from Pixabay. Sure enough, it's big enough. It's very yellow, though. I might have to brighten those teeth. What else do I have? I have the mouse head, which isn't in the exact right angle, but is it close enough where I can tilt it and put the lion's mouth? And the head is just enough in terms of size without having to, to soften that resolution. And that's from Pixabay. I have a, a different ear option, which is on this bulldog, which I kind of like. I only found this because this bulldog's name is Bat. <laughs> so these are Bat's ears. But I kind of like how image searches do that, show you some random options mixed in with what you actually think you want. And maybe I'll combine these ears together to make a, a unique ear. Remember, this, is, this Bat is the one from Google Images. This is the only copyrighted image with the rights reserved that I'm using. So that's the one I, I really have to be careful to transform. 
Then I have, I thought it might be interesting to put some tusks in there instead of the buck teeth. So I got this wild boar and its tusks. And remember, when things come in, you can always flip them. You can always resize them. So I'm just going to flip that to the right orientation. I can go ahead and flip the bat to the right orientation too with Command-T, which is Control-T in Photo-P to get to the Transform options. Every other head is facing the right way. And then I have the coloration of this, this wild pig, which I liked. And I'll go ahead and flip that. But I don't know if that's going to be as useful as the mouse. And then there are some things I probably just won't use unless I need to. I got this monkey for the open mouth expression. But it's a little disturbing. And I don't think I want this to be a disturbing creature. And then I got a deer with a really nice mouth. You got a pretty mouth. So if I need to, I can always use that because that matches the length of my, my creature's mandible of its jaw. So you're required to have at least five references, right? Just for the head, I have one, two, three, four, five, six references. So how do I do this? Well, I have to figure out what the limiting factor is. The limiting factor is this mouse's head. So I'm going to start with my lasso. I'm going to find that mouse layer, and to do that, I can use my move tool with auto select turned on for layer. Click on it, it will take me to that smart object. Use my lasso, and with lots of overlap, I don't need the hands, definitely not using those. And this was great because Pixabay had this on a white background. I duplicate out just the head, and I can just delete the smart object behind it, because I, I know where to find it. I have it all nicely organized if I ever need to go back to that reference. Now, instead of moving that on top of my sketch and trying to make it match, you know, by Command T and rotating it, instead of that, I want to build it off to the side. And it's okay if you build it even a little bit bigger than it it needs to match your sketch. I'm limited by the size of, of the head reference, and I like that eye a lot. That eye is nice and bright and shiny. But what if I wanted to put in a different eye and try that out? Well, maybe I'll take this, because I like the coloration of this eye and this beginning of an ear. I also like how that ear is kind of catching the light. So I'm going to grab a little bit more than I need. So there's overlap. Make sure that that layer is selected. And then hit Command-J, duplicate it, move it up on top. Then I can turn off the layer it came from and delete it. So you have to... Select it and lasso it first and Command-J because that will automatically make a duplicate of your selection and that rasterizes it for you. And then you can transform. You can transform before or after, even when it's a smart object. Now that's what's neat about this is because I found reference that was at the right angle, this is without any modification at all, that eye just lines up beautifully with the anatomy and with the angle of that mouse, right? And it already makes it an unusual creature. So I think there's something to that eye. And it even matches the other eye well enough, I don't need to worry about it. Okay, next, the ear. So let's take the bulldog ear, click on that layer, get lots of overlap for it. Command J, duplicate that, erase the smart layer underneath because I can always get that back. Then take that layer, that ear layer, move it to the top.
and then I can transform it 